Hands up who hates Dave Batista, because that is an absolutely amazing home gymnasium. I think this is my dream. Simon Miller, bald a-hole here. Thank you for joining me as always. And the internet has just been very kind to me over the last few weeks. I love fitness and I love wrestling. And recently, people that are involved in fitness have been going out and talking to wrestlers, or in this case, a former wrestler, and saying, hey, man, what are you eating? How are you training? And if you were like me, especially when I was younger, growing up watching professional wrestling, WWE, you looked at all these behemoths and you were like, oh, my gosh, I need to know everything about your diet. And yes, I'm sure there was some secret sauce going on. But I still enjoy knowing the basics because it all starts with the basics before you even do get to what may or may not be going into someone's body. So Men's Health did have a chat with Dave Batista. He went through what he ate. He went through how he trains these days, which is also very interesting because he's into his 50s now, I believe. So of course, he's going to have to adapt how he is going to the gym. And I remember too, this is the kind of information that sticks in my brain. Years and years and years ago, which he also doubles up on, on this video, he mentioned that he was training way too hard and he wasn't giving his body enough time to recover. So he introduced three rest days. He was only training four days a week. And that was one of the best things that he had ever done. Now, I'm not saying that you should do that. But of course, he was professional wrestling. He was putting a lot of stress onto his body, onto his joints. And as soon as he made that transition, all of a sudden, he felt he looked and felt better. So never forget, sometimes you don't have to do the obvious. So he talks about eggs, he talks about fish, obviously two great sources of protein. Then he mentions how sort of 90% of his diet is also vegan. He'll talk about that more in a second as well. But what was, you know, the most important part I felt was he realized he was allergic to dairy. So he went and changed his diet too many times. And like, maybe this isn't massively prevalent, but I get people asking me this question all of the time. We just carry on regardless, because again, that's what we've seen everybody else doing. So if you are doing the whole, I don't know, chicken, broccoli, rice, chicken, broccoli, rice, chicken, broccoli, rice diet, but you're bloated all the time, or you're not feeling very good. There could be something within chicken. I mean, it's very rare chicken broccoli rice because it's so damn simple. It's why sometimes people actually go back to that. But the point is this. Whatever you are eating, if your body is not reacting kindly to it, go and try and figure out what it is. Your body can be an asshole, is the truth. You know, I've talked about my exploits with caffeine over and over again. I won't do it again because it's massively boring. So now I have to restrict the amount of caffeine that I'm drinking. Do I want to do that? No. I want to be a stimulated mother hubbard, but I'm not allowed. And that's the same with this. It's so easy to just go, well, I must carry on because I'm bodybuilding, suffering, suffering. It doesn't have to be suffering. If you can believe it, it can be fun. See, he cut out red meat, he cut out pork. I've cut out red meat as well. I did it because I thought it'd be helpful for the environment. Don't come at me in the comments. Last time I said this, oh, some of the people just let me live my own life. I have read things and I just believe it's good. But it goes to show you don't have to be in steak every day. So there you go, he's gluten-free, he's dairy-free, and he's basically a vegan other than eggs and the fish. Now, I'm not gluten-free, uh, but it may help you. You know, some people do struggle to digest gluten, but it's not. The problem with gluten-free stuff is that some people think it means healthy. So they eat a bunch of gluten-free cookies. It's not, it's not healthy for you. Of course, you can get healthy food, but a cookie is a cookie is a cookie is a cookie. Stop trying to find ways to justify cookies. What's your diet like on set? I'll never get over that. It's the second time I've heard that today. In his contract that he gets to eat four hours. Now, look, he's worked for it and he's a massive Hollywood superstar. And I'm sure there's far more audacious things in these deals. How great would that be, though? Yes, I'll come do your movie, which is infinitely cool to begin with. But also, I have to eat every four hours. And I'm not sure if it's in the video, but it's in the article on men's health. You know, part of it, too, is that I think he requests some kind of cardio machine. He requests a rack. He requests a barbell. He requests some dumbbells. And he requests a bench. And that has to be sort of, you know, near his trailer or in his trailer, whatever the hell it may be, so he can get his workouts in. That's how I want to live. I want to live by somebody going, we must go out of our way to ensure Simon Miller can train. Why? Because he flipping loves the gym. What is your go-to comfort food? Now, I don't know much about sushi. I know much of a sushi guy. But he mentions at some point in the future, he's going to cut out fish. I'm pretty sure you can't have a lot of sushi without fish. Maybe you can. What the hell do I know? But, you know, good for Batista, I suppose. Do you take any supplements?
I would have liked him to go more into his supplements, you know, just because I'm always intrigued to see what people are taking. Never forget, too, supplements will help you, but only 1%, 2%. You don't need to get obsessed with them. But he did mention the classic, right? He mentioned omega-3 fish oils. I'm starting to think that's probably one of the most important supplements you should be taking. That, to me, is almost on the cusp of essential. You must be doing it because, you know, it helps you out a little bit when it comes to fitness and stuff. But again, health and fitness, what's the most important word? Health. It is so good for your overall health. And it helps um, inflammation and things like that, which is going to help you when it gets to the gym. So I think you should start taking some. I'm not going to recommend a dosage because I think it's going to be absolutely individual in the person and you should read about it and maybe even talk to your doctor. I don't know, or, or some kind of, what they call I can't remember the call now, but a health professional, right? Because they'll be able to steer you in the right direction. But yeah, in terms of lifting weights, creatine, absolutely. And then overall on a bigger level, I'm saying omega-3s. I've known about his collection of lunchboxes for a while. It was in a WW magazine years ago. And good for him. You should be able to collect what you want. I don't have much to say about it, but I thought I'd say something, so I have. How often do you work out? Hands up who hates Dave Batista, because that is an absolutely amazing home gymnasium. I think this is my dream. My dream is to somehow become so successful and so rich <laughs> that I can just have a basement gym like that. It'd be so cool. It's right there. The timings would be effortless. No one's going to be using equipment. And you could just have whatever you want in there. I'd have three squat racks. Do I need three squat racks? No. But just knowing that even if somehow an alien broke into my gym, I'd still be able to squat would make me a happy person. Yesterday, I was doing legs. And guess what? Somebody was curling in the squat rack. And you should go up to them and go, man, you are a mother piece of crap. But you don't because it's just not how the way the world works. Drax dumbbells that he imported from the UK. I mean, look, if you've got the money, do it. I'd love that. I would import dumbbells from the USA if I could have what I have him print on the side, like Batman logo. Oh my gosh, it'd be the best thing ever. I want a Batman gym. It just, it's just cool. It's just badass. And I think it's quite inspirational. And that's another important thing as well, training for what you're actually trying to do and what you're actually trying to achieve. This is something that I've struggled to justify, not justify, to segue into, I suppose. It's not the right word, segue. Um, but you sh when I was, I'm so, like, 16, when I fit in the gym, I trained like a bodybuilder, right? Like a, well, I didn't really eat like a bodybuilder to learn about the nutrition, but I trained like a bodybuilder, bro splits and all of that. But now that I do a lot of wrestling too, sometimes you have to remember, you know, cardio is an integral part of being able to do anything athletic. So you need to make sure you work that in too. I'm not sure whether it's in the video, but on the article, Batista also says sometimes he trains twice a day. Now, what he probably means, I don't know for sure, but I just want to give you some context just in case you think, oh, I'm going to start doing weights in the morning, weights in the evening. Sometimes when people say they train twice a day, they mean they do cardio in the morning and they do their weights in the evening or vice versa, right? That does count as going to the gym twice a day, especially if you're doing cardio in the gym, which he would be doing because he has a home gym. But never overly worry too much. So let's say that you have been bodybuilding for ages or doing a bodybuilding diet, bodybuilding training program. And you get into boxing, you get into MMA, you get into whatever the hell it would be. It's all right and it's all cool to adapt to what you need to achieve. You're still going to be stimulating those muscles. It may just be in a different way and you can still find time to go to the gym. But I guess what I'm trying to say, because I know I've been there as well, is sometimes you can let the whole idea of being a big ripped guy overtake other things that you may want to do. And you don't need to. It's so easy to adapt. Well, it's not easy. It takes some time, but you can certainly do it. And that's just amazing as well. Like, I knew he suffered from asthma quite badly because, again, he's talked about it in previous interviews. And I think I knew about the inhalers, but maybe I've just read it. Actually hearing you know, the words coming out of his mouth. 
that was well, twofold. One, it's kind of terrifying because I think we forget how bad asthma can be. But once again, also very inspiring. It goes to show that, especially with Batista, because not only did he start in wrestling late, but he got into Hollywood late and he still found massive success. And I think these are the kind of things because like so many times people think, oh, I'm too old to do this. I'm too old to do that. And maybe that was true. But why don't you become the first person to break that mold? So let's say you do want to be an actor and you're 71 years old. Just go be an actor. Maybe you'll star in some massive, huge, you know, blockbuster movie. And then everyone else who's 71 and wants to be an actor can look at you and you could be their inspiration. That's a very good point. Randy Orton once said that Kevin Owens, again, wrestling, all my, all my uh, examples are wrestling, but he once said that Kevin Owens was the smartest person in wrestling because he wears shorts and a t-shirt and doesn't have to sort of be super duper ripped all the time. How hard must that have been for Batista when you know you're filming? What's he done? Three of them, two of them, whatever the hell it was. And he needs to be topless the entire time. It's a lot of pressure. And yes, it gets into that other conversation. That's probably a huge reason why he likely does something that we don't know, apparently, allegedly. He's not wrong, you know. That is the best way it's ever been described. Like high intensity training, but also someone's trying to punch you in the face. Obviously, I've never done it to the level that Batista has done it. And he said he's never done it to the level that other people have done it. But I used to do a lot of boxing in my younger years. Not like professional, not amateur. I mean, not like fights, but just go to, yeah, boxing classes, boxing training, whatever. And of course, within that, you would do miniature fights within that class. You try boxing while also trying to protect yourself for even 30 seconds. And you are utterly, utterly gassed. It's on the floor. I can't breathe. I can't breathe. It is horrific. But it, and that's another reason, right? So if all of a sudden you do take that in, you have that as part of your training and you don't want to lose any size, you probably can up your calories because your cardiovascular activity is going to be crazy. What's your favorite exercise? Squats. I have a love-hate relationship with squats. Some days you go in there and you just smash out like an incredible or you break your PB or whatever it is, you're doing really heavy and it feels good. And sometimes you do one with barely any plates in your body, like, oh no, I don't want to do this. But it's not as bad as lunges. Let's check out your boxing ring. got a boxing ring upstairs <laughs> he's got gym downstairs and a boxing ring upstairs but again classic cardio he's doing the bike he also does boxing i've accidentally already talked about this i got ahead of myself but these are great ways to get your cardio in and they're enjoyable boxing is far more enjoyable than just sitting on a bike for however long it may be so why not do both It's always abs. It's always six pack. Go and look up what is some of the most searched stuff on Google when it comes to going to the gym, bodybuilding, lifting weights. It's always abs. Everyone wants a six pack. Nobody actually wants to be gigantic. They just want to have a six pack. And this is true when you get to stuff like the tabloids, whatever the hell they're called. You will show an actor who has put on just a minuscule amount of size, but you can basically see their bicep peak. You're like, oh my gosh, this person is gigantic. But oh my gosh, they are. Because unfortunately, when you do get into bodybuilding, the worst thing you ever do is pick up a weight and enjoy it. Then you're never going to like your body for the rest of your life. All right, time for some rapid fire questions. Workout time, 7 a.m. or 7 p.m.? We're just going to play along. I don't know why. He's not asking me this. No one cares, but mine would be 7 p.m. Squat or deadlift? Deadlift. Always deadlift, no squat. Favorite song on your playlist? So this changes all the time. Right now, it would be the sort of Damocles, whatever the hell it's called, by Trivium off their brand new album. But yeah, usually it's a Metallica song. CrossFit, yay or nay? I respect CrossFit, but I don't want to do it because I don't like it. Ties into what we've already talked about. Pull-ups or chin-ups? Pull-ups. It's better for your back. Dumbbells or kettlebells? Dumbbells. Don't like kettlebells. I'm weird. Run on the treadmill or the great outdoors? Treadmill. I don't like running outside because I'm baby. Cardio or weights? Weights? I hate cardio. If you could work out with anyone in the world, dead or alive, who would it be? Arnold Schwarzenegger. Straight away, from, but maybe not like, 
maybe mm, maybe the old Arnold Schwarzenegger, but with the brain he's got now, not the brain, but his attitude now. I think back in like the 70s and 80s, he would just crush you. That man was a big personality. So there you go. Boom. Thank you very much, David Batista, for letting us know. Once again, it's nice, simple stuff. What's his diet? Eggs, fish, beans. Uh, it was chicken, you know, before he decided to give it up. There's nothing absolutely crazy in there. He's not doing a keto diet. He's not doing carb cycling. But you can do those things, but it just goes to show. And his training is nice and simple too. It's a shame he didn't get into sort of the meat and potatoes or whether he's doing push-pull legs or whether he's doing a bro spit or something like that. So he probably is doing something like back and buys, chest and tries, legs and maybe in shoulders or maybe sort of filling around with that a little bit. And maybe some days he just does boxing or does the martial arts, which obviously is going to take a huge toll on your body too. Now, the reason I enjoy doing this, and the reason I enjoy doing the Roman Reigns one is because hopefully it's portraying or painting a better picture for you that there is no magic sauce there's nothing secret here keep it simple stupid is absolutely fine just find what works for you find what is sustainable and then you will get not necessarily the physique that you want because i never actually think that exists but you will get in better shape than you are now which is the goal. You're only in competition with yourself. Now, please do like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Hit the bell, ding, ding. So you know when other videos are going live, there is another video on the screen, probably the Roman Reigns one, if you haven't checked it out already. I've teamed up with more plates, more dates, Grilla Mind, Grilla Mode. Uh, there's a link in the description below. Use code SIMON to get 10% off whenever you should wish. Also in Greg Doucette's cookbook. Again, all the information down there with some codes to get some money off. At Simon316 on Instagram and Twitter. I'm on Cameo if you want to shout out. Patreon.com for Simon316 if you want to support me there. And Simon at the for merchandise. Otherwise, I will salute you, tell you I love you and I'll talk to you again soon.